Well, the letter was addressed to the two members of parliament in the area, Paula Sheriff and uh, Tracy Brebin, um, because they cover the Dewsbury Hospital area. Um, its purpose was twofold, uh, maybe three reasons. Um, one, I think there is a real need to be very specific and very clear about what we're planning for Dewsbury Hospital. Um, they know that, um, but there is still a lot of misconception in the community about what's happening with Dewsbury Hospital. They are key people um, who are, have many contacts, many networks that we don't have. Um, so using them in that way, I felt was important. But being transparent and open about that, so that the public knew what we were telling the MPs, um, that it was also apparent to them. So in one go, you're able to get that message across extremely clearly. So what are the plans for the hospital then? What is it that you wanted to outline exactly? Well, the plans for the... We've got three hospital sites. We're very fortunate in mid-Yorkshire in having three hospital sites. Um, everybody knows the way the NHS is struggling at the moment. Um, the key issue is about um, expertise, um, the, 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 the number of specialist doctors you have, the number of nurses you have, etc., etc. So we have the advantage of using each of our three sites differently, making Dewsbury a much busier elective um, centre where patients can still go to A&E 24-7, um, uh, can have uh, routine operations done, day case work and so on and so forth. But with Pinderfield at Wakefield uh, being the main hospital for non-elective emergency trauma work where people need to stay in hospital. So the main change that's happening at Dewsbury is that we're reducing the number of beds because the future work of Dewsbury won't need people staying in hospital. It's difficult at the moment with, there's been a lot of talk in this region about Huddersfield's A&E being yeah. closed yeah. as well. So it must have been even more important to make sure that A&E work is being kept going in this region because it's getting a squeeze across the area as it is. I think, yes, but within that there are other challenges and one of those challenges is about the public understanding what A&E is all about and what it's to be used for. You know, we do get 30 to 40 percent. Just before Christmas, we had 40 percent of people turning up in the A&E with minor cuts, coughs and colds. Now, you know, that, and I don't want to try to stop people coming to A&E. I want them to realise that you have pharmacies, you, you have their GP surgeries, you have not, um, 111. Uh, where you can get help and assistance. a and is not the only outlet. Uh, so when we get all of that right, we'll be able to use Dewsbury uh, much more effectively, and that will complement whatever's happening at Calderdale and Huddersfield. And that's three or four years away anyway. I was going to say, because that's the thing, is that there's, there was, again, it was unclear as to exactly when these changes were going to be brought in and what the sort of time scale was. Yeah, well, I think that's a, um, a very good point in that the plans we had approved three four years ago by the Secretary of State, we'd hoped to be able to implement them by the end of March this year. Um, we've already, you know, we're not, we're not silly at the board. Um, uh, we're not just willy-nilly going ahead and implementing something that was thought of four years, five years ago now. Um, so we have put back some of our um, plans because we understand things change. And we're having to uh, um, uh, create different plans. In the sense, the key issue is about the number of beds we take out of the system. We're already beginning to realise that that will not be as many as we had thought. We, we expected to pull down Bronte Tower here, um, for example, but realising we might need more beds, we, we've put that to one side for the time being. I'm not saying it won't happen, because the reconfiguration is still necessary. Getting our three hospitals operating extremely effectively is still necessary. But the timing of that change needs a lot of other things to come in place, including the way we use a &E, including getting care homes sorted, more community beds, GP surgeries more accessible. Lots of things have to come in place. We are just part of a jigsaw. So this is definitely something that is going to take a while to sort of come into play when there's so many other factors involved. It will, it will take a while, but we can do our bit. Um, uh, you know, our, our task is to manage whilst the rest of the system is put in place. Um, because at the moment, everybody knows that um, uh, you know, we, we, are, um, we could be better. When, I mean, Mid-Yorkshire mid um, could, could do things a bit better. Um, 
Uh, we're very good at care. The last CQC report talked about how caring our staff were and so on and so forth. But yes, we do have. I admit we've got too many people on waiting lists, for example. Too many people waiting too long. We need to become a lot more effective, a lot more efficient. So these changes are absolutely necessary. Um, but, but when is something the board is reviewing on a monthly basis? And that's, that, that must be a difficult thing as well for, for patients not knowing exactly what's going to happen and, and where it's going to go and, and when. Well, I think the when, I accept, but the what is going to happen, is I think, is very clear, as described in the letter. That's what we're aiming to achieve. At the moment, the public will know that um, the changes we're going to make to Dewsbury Hospital are planned to happen in May this year. What we are saying is, if it is not the right time, then you know, we might defer that yet again. But it's all about patient safety. It's absolutely all about patient safety. Um, and the reason why, um, you know, at the moment, for example, the, the, the way we operate Dewsbury a and &E here will not change. We'll still have a consultant-led service. We will still have consultants on call through the night. That's exactly what we do now. It's those patients who need beds for a period of days that will be transferred to Pinderfield. So the basic A&E uh, will not change. You know, th th there's no date about changing that. Um, people will still be able to come to A&E at Dewsbury, as they do now. And that's been the key with the letter, is that it's yes. getting that message across it's and having that transparency there it, so that everyone can see exactly what, what the plans are. Absolutely, yeah, that's what it's all about. We want to, you know, uh, I want it to be very transparent to say to the MPs, look, this is the deal where, where we know, where, you're aware of this. We've, we've, we've briefed them. Um, um, and this, this is what we're about. Here are our plans, open for the public. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'd like to think I'm nobody's fool in that I'm not going to promise MPs something and then do something differently tomorrow. This is an open commitment to the community of Dewsbury. Have you had any feedback from the MPs since sending the letter out? Well, um, the only f I haven't had any direct feedback, and I'm meeting them tomorrow, but that's part of a routine meeting. It's not been set up as a result of this. We meet every other month uh, with all of the MPs, so I'll see you then.